Hey, hi, hello, welcome to Kit and Kajira Gaming, welcome if you are new, you can call me KK, and today we are doing another tiny home village here on The Sims 4. Now, I will say one of these um, houses was already built, I did build it on my live, and I will link it down below and up in the cards above, but the village theme this week is going to be Halloween movies, but kid-friendly Halloween movies. So we have the likes of Beetlejuice, Coraline, Casper, Nightmare Before Christmas, Halloween Town, and things like that. So I have a magic spinning wheel, and our first spin while we were on our live was Beetlejuice. So I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough tour of the completed Beetlejuice tiny home, and then we will get started on our, our very first wheel spin for this video. Let's head on over. So here we are in the Forgotten Hollow. I actually removed Vlad. This was Vlad's lot. I ended up destroying the home because I liked having the graveyard on both sides and I thought it would just be the perfect little rendition for a little Halloween build. So our first house that we ended up building was over here and this is our Beetlejuice house. Now I tried to keep the inside of the house as true to the movie as possible, but keeping with the before theme, like before it got modernized and this is what we are left with. So I tried to do this the best I can in a tiny home fashion and you know what? I think I actually kept it tiny, which is definitely not something I normally can do in my builds. So let's hop on in to the first floor and we'll see what we've got. So first things first with our tiny home right outside, I do have the for sale sign uh, as just a nod to when the original homeowners uh, untimely death and their house got put up for sale. So we're just gonna go and check out the inside of our house. So as we enter the classic red door, we are met with their foyer and I kept the chest here with a stack of boxes and the rocking chair as a nod to the end of the movie when Lydia is dancing and floating right in front of the staircase. So a lot of this wallpaper and everything inside this house is very old worldly. So as you turn to the right, we are going to be greeted with their dining room and kitchen and it is again a tiny home so everything is very compact. I tried to make the kitchen as true to the movie as possible, um, but there's not a lot of clutter. I do not have much in the way of clutter because I did want to keep this build very functional. Here is their teeny tiny living room. We have just two old classic armchairs. And I tried to make a nod to Adam's horse collection on top of the fireplace. Unfortunately, that was as tiny as I could get the horses, but that is what we have for the downstairs. I have honestly never used a lot of these curtains because I'm not very much into the old timey look, but I really love how they look in this house. Let's go ahead, let's head up to the second floor where we have the two bedrooms and the bathroom. So as we come up the stairs, the hallway is a pretty bland. Um, I did try again to keep this as close to the movie as possible and I didn't remember them having a bunch of photos all up over the walls, but I did want to leave the walls space open for anybody that does take this off the gallery. So as you turn around from this corner here, we are met with the first bedroom here on the right. And this is just our guest bedroom. So it is still very tiny. I did put a clothing rack and clothing items from the horse ranch collection. There's of course a fan and we have a little mirror here with some positive affirmation notes and I just put a couple of old timey looking photos in here but that's basically it this room is very very plain but I do think it fits the build very well so as we leave the guest bedroom the first door here on the right is our bathroom and again I did keep it very timely in here so everything in here is just as true to the time period of the 1990 Beetlejuice film as possible. And again, everything in here does work. And as we leave the bathroom and go to this first doorway here, this is the master bedroom. So similar in design to the guest bedroom, it is very minimalistic in here. I do kind of almost have like a his and hers closet in here. And we have just a couple of photos in here. And then up on the top of this shelf, 
I did put a book that looked very similar to the recently, the handbook for the recently deceased up there. So just a tiny little nod to it as well. We're gonna leave the bedroom. So after we leave the master bedroom, there's a tiny little hallway down here with a secret hidden door on this side that's going to take us up to the attic. But in this little area, I wanted it to be like a skill area, kind of like a little hangout. So we just have a couple of photos, some books, and then just an art set. But now we do need to go up this stairwell, which I'm pretty certain, uh, be prepared for a jump scare. I'm 98% certain I have a sim in this closet. There is. So we're gonna go up this ladder and apparently look up her nose and see what we have up in the attic space. So as we come up the stairwell, we are greeted with some chairs that are just up here for storage. Of course, there's gonna be lots of cobwebs and stuff everywhere. And I do have a nod to the handbook for the recently deceased. But as we pan over to the left, I made a little diorama, which is a very classic item from Beetlejuice that was up in the attic. So I just shrunk everything down as far as I could and just kind of tried to replicate the model the best I could. And this is everything that is in the attic. And not much in here, but I did try to keep the nods to the movie as best as I could with the items available in game. So that was our walkthrough of the first tiny home in this kids Halloween movie village. Now let's go ahead and spin the wheel a second time and you guys can actually watch this process for the next tiny home. So our next tiny home build is going to be Nightmare Before Christmas. We need to do a tiny home based off of Nightmare Before Christmas. So I think I almost want to do this tiny home very similar to the way Jack's house is in the movie. I'm not entirely sure how we're going to get it here up on this hill. I might have to raise the terrain a bit and then just build in some stairs. But I really think I want to build the tiny house to look just like this house from the movie. So our next tiny home area is going to be this little area right here next to Beetlejuice's home. And I think the first thing I got to do is I need to raise the terrain. Okay, so I think I got it. I ended up just kind of shrinking the area in the back where the house is going to be. The front part of the stairs is still kind of on the sidewalk, like just, just the tiniest little smidge. But I got it to work. And I did play test it with my other sim. You can climb the stairs. So we're good to start building. Like I said, I do want to make this tiny home very similar to Jack's house. I'm looking at the house and it has a an upside down trapezoid shape as the base of the house. And I'm not entirely sure we can actually do that on the sims. Maybe we'll start... Maybe we'll make this like multi-story and we'll just make each level slightly taller than the rest. Like maybe this could be the main area. Let's do a second one, just like ever so slightly wider, maybe like one click wider. And then we'll just copy this level and put it here. And then I guess that'll be the house structure. I'm just trying to create that illusion of like the swoop that's i don't know just something where it doesn't look so boxy but i don't think honestly i'm i don't think i'm really gonna have much of a choice a gabled roof on the top we're gonna have it very pointy yeah it's gotta be like very very pointy so we're gonna pull it up as high as it'll go and then it looks like there's like a balcony on the second floor there's also a tower that would go right here. I'm trying to think how I would do that because this is technically not a floor that they can get to. So I think I got the framework done. I think I kind of actually like the way I did it. I'm trying to keep as true to the movies as possible like over here with Beetlejuice. And then here with Nightmare Before Christmas, I hate that there's not a lot of windows. Um, especially when in The Sims, like, natural lighting is best. I'm kind of stuck with this 
um, in terms of window placement. I might take some creative liberty and add some windows once we actually get in to the house, especially when we try and figure out what's going where, because this is definitely a very different build than normal. So we're going to have a lot of staircases in here. So there's really not much that can be done in here. So I think we're going to start off with some stairs. So I think for now, we're just going to have that there. Lub bup boards from the holidays collection. So because the downstairs is really small, I'm going to go with this floral bat motif from vampires but we're going to do it in the black and white one so the print is black but the like overall majority of the wallpaper is white so i think for lighting down here i really like this small victorian candle chandelier from vampires it gives just the right amount of glow down here to kind of still keep it nightmare before christmas theme s and then we need i just need something down here other than just like it's a blank entry room Okay, so I also ended up doing some, just a little bit of outside decor while I was floating around looking for stuff to fill that bottom in. Um, I did actually find this really, really cute mailbox. I believe this is from Seasons, but it was just so cute. It was the Halloween option and it just perfectly fit with Nightmare Before Christmas. I had a couple scraggly trees and some tombstones and these like little gargoyles and kneeling fey thing over here. I just added like this cauldron, a little pumpkin trio, this moon petal from werewolves, a couple of cobwebs here and there. And then I just put like the garland up in the top, but I did it in black and red. And then a spider, but I think I'm going to move the spider. I'm going to move the spider over here. And that is the entryway. So now we're on the second floor which i guess would technically be the main floor so let's again we're gonna start with the flooring i think we're gonna do the same flooring that we have from the spooky pack which is the lub dup boards we're gonna go back and filter again the wallpaper to white gray and black i know this is the same wallpaper as downstairs but it's just red um so i think i really want to try and possibly change the wallpaper up here but i really loved that wallpaper from vampires there's also so there's a bunch of these from the spooky stuff pack like there's this one which is called wallpaper in belfry which whoa that is super dark i actually kind of like it so we're gonna do with this super dark wallpaper and so that i'm actually able to see we're gonna put some saucer lighting in here it's so dark in here that I had to add four of the largest saucers and I still can barely see. So these ladders are definitely what is going to make or break our build because I can't fit staircases in here. It's definitely going to take up way too much room. So whoever lives here, I hope you like climbing ladders because that's that's what you're getting. All right, I think we're going to put the next ladder in this corner so down here on this level it's going to be a tiny kitchen and dining and living space so may the odds be ever in my favor for this one i think our best option would be for this area over here to be the dining or to be the living room and then this area over here without the ladder to be the kitchen dinette so Realm of Magic has this really pretty iron counter, which I think just screams Jack. Oh, this fridge from Realm of Magic is perfect. Do they have it in another colorway though? No, I was kind of hoping it had the same, like maybe we could do like a, uh, a red in there peeking through, but it's not possible. So we got a full size fridge in here, which is great. And you know what? Maybe we don't need a dinette. I don't know. Maybe they'll just like eat on the couch because we are definitely running out of space or maybe we'll do the living room area upstairs i don't know because this is definitely super super tiny i don't think i can actually fit a living room in here and have them still be able to get around i could like put a tv here but i don't think i could put a I, I don't even think I can put a chair without it blocking. So let's see if maybe we have like a couch. So Realm of Magic has a matching stove. So we'll put the matching stove over here in the corner. There's still something for prep. Um, but there's like no sink. Oh my god, what am I gonna do? Oh no. I don't know. Oh no, I think I think I actually made our tiny home too tiny. Because like the only way I can make this work is if this is kitchen and dining room on this floor and maybe we'll just do this raw industrial sink right there and then we're just gonna do a tiny table 
This is definitely just going to be a single person house. Sorry, if you have friends that want to come over, they have to find somewhere else to sit and eat because this is not working. Because they can still get to the oven. And then we can put the TV here, maybe? I don't think I don't think this is going to work. Um, I could totally put some bookshelves in that corner, though. Okay, so I think in this corner, I'm just going to put this same bookshelf that I have downstairs up in this corner. Okay, so I did end up adding the same chandelier that we had downstairs in the foyer area. I ended up putting it up here as well, but I changed the candles to red to try and bring in some of this red over here. I'm just, I'm not quite happy with the placement of these chandeliers, but it's kind of what I get for making the room so tiny. But I did add some uh, Yuletide nods in here too, with just like the garland up above the windows. And then I kept everything between neutral and spooky at the same time. And a little fun thing is I grabbed these potions. I don't know if they're debug potions, but when you have them on, uh, like when you're in live mode, they like have little things that pop up, which is super cute. Let's go to the next floor, which I just saw my sim run up and we're going to start decorating and she's going to get really mad when I take that chair. So on this floor, I'm going to need to do the bedroom and a bathroom. So that'll be fun. Again, super tiny. This is what I get. We're going to keep the flooring the same. I do enjoy this flooring quite a bit. And I think because this floor is also really tiny, it's not much bigger than the other floors. I think I want to do maybe this like light gray. It's the same wallpaper that's on the first foyer floor. So bed wise, we do have a coffin. I could, in theory, do the coffin uh, because, again, this is Nightmare Before Christmas. This is Jack Skellington's house. But I don't know, unless you're a vampire, I don't think an actual sim would sleep in there. Maybe we'll do this pup and up apogee loft from werewolves that will give me more room to put something underneath. However, the problem I'm going to run into is I don't have space for a bathroom. I do need a section off just the tiniest little corner for the bathroom. I'm going to keep the same wallpaper, but I'm just going to do white motif. I think we're going to do this soulful entrance as our door. Problem I'm seeing now, though, is they can't get to this ladder well to go up. So we definitely need a toilet. We need some sort of shower and we need a sink. I end up going with just this postmodern shower stall. I could actually do the old fashioned tank from vampires. What if we do like a tall stand up dresser here? Do this one right there. So they do still have a dresser. I kind of like the idea of the tinkering table under here because Jack would tinker. But maybe we can put the tinkering table outside on the balcony. There's this Willa, Will of the Wisp desk, which kind of fits the vibe under here. Okay, so I did end up taking the uh, spiky gothic dining chair. It does clip to the desk, so that means they can use it. So I do like this chair out here. I'm definitely going to keep the chair, but I want to see if maybe I can put it in a different color. Yes, we'll do it in red. Okay, so I added just a little bit of extra knickknacks and stuff around this flooring. So I added this rug. It's a holiday rug. So I have the Christmas one in the bathroom and then the Halloween one out on this patio. I did put some lanterns out here and then the little pumpkin light tree thing next to this chair. Of course, with the tinkering bench, you guys saw me move out here earlier. And then just in here, I just added some of these garlands to the windows, added this rug from the new nurseries kit and just put some lighting in here. So I put the chandeliers in like the main part of the room and then I just put a puck light here in the bathroom. The last little part that we have to do is this little part right here. It is the teeniest, tiniest little studio. And this, I think, is just going to be like an astronomy tower kind of thing. So I did end up grabbing this chalkboard. I don't remember where it's from. It's called the Pathway Specials chalkboard. I think this is from Get to Work. I grabbed it when I was looking for something else because I didn't want to lose it. So this is what we got. I'm going to turn this into like Jack's observatory kind of thing. So there's not going to be much in here. Wallpaper wise, I wonder if maybe there's stars. Oh, wait, no, I know what I can do. Okay, I just need a black wallpaper. Touch of 
starlight it's in the love struck collection and i'm just gonna put these all over the wall what if i made this like a knitting area so i think what i'm gonna have to do is i'm just gonna search through everything they have here and we can just kind of clutter it up a little bit in here so instead of having like a desk we can just maybe have this yarn basket i can fit one of those really cool chairs in there which i mean it's fine it works and then we can just put a bunch of crafting stuff in here i think that's that's that room that's it they have a little like interactive knitting bag uh and a chair <laughs> that's that's what's in the tower so i do need to add a little more decor around here i think i just need to add some more landscaping and then that would definitely finish off jack's house okay so jack's nightmare before christmas house is finally complete i went in added a bunch of stuff around for landscaping and then i also added a fencing as close as i could get to the fence that is in nightmare before christmas including the little wrought iron gate at the bottom all right so i just went in and decided last minute to add some trim which i think really pulls it all together and still kept it in that spooky vibe but this is what it looks like during the daytime and then this is what it looks like at night i decided to put the lower lights to green to kind of represent a little bit of that like green smoke that comes out of the well in the middle of the town but this is what we have i really really like how this came out despite the fact that it's really really thin it's very tiny this was very difficult to build but we're gonna switch back to daytime and go inside jack's house and take a look at all the tiny little details that we added so first things first as we come up the stairs we were just greeted with some pumpkins and some tombstones just a small little nod to entering jack's house So here is our main entrance area. There's a couple of nods to Christmas floating around, like our holiday tree here. And then there's some black and red garland up at the top. Of course, keeping our nods to Halloween with the spiders and then the pumpkins and moon petal flower over there. Very simple, nothing too much to do in this foyer because it is ridiculously small. So we're going to go ahead up the ladder and head to the first floor of the main part of the house. So as we come up from the staircase over here on the left side. Ignore my Sims booty being in the way. But over on this side, we just have some books and some creepy items. And to add our Christmas nod, we did have some garland up around the windows. This is a single person domicile. So you have one chair, one bed, nothing else. Um, the kitchen is honestly probably the biggest takeaway. Um, as tiny as it is, this has the most functionality in it. Every part in this build is functional, even if it is ridiculously tiny. So we are now going to go from that ladder well there to that ladder well all the way over here in the corner. And we're going to check out the third floor. So as we come out of the third floor ladder well, we are in the bedroom bathroom area. This room was a pain in my butt. So I do still have that like random long hallway that Sims can't really access. So I kind of feel like blocking it off and maybe making the bathroom a little bit bigger. Um, I'm not entirely sure I might do that just because there's just a, it's just a random long strip of a hallway. Okay. So I did exactly what I just said I was going to do. I ended up closing that area off and we extended the bathroom by like one square, which definitely helped add this sink and mirror combo because when we were in here, it was just this toilet and a shower. There's not much going on in here. It is a sink, a shower, a little nod to Christmas with that garland bow over there and the rug but that's it in this room i didn't put anything else in here i probably should have i probably could have put like some christmas photos in here but i really didn't want to before we head up to the ladder we're going to go through this door here and this takes us out onto the balcony so on the front porch we do just have this little tinkering bench a halloween rug and then this really nifty chair that is from the Vampires Collection and then the Pumpkin Light. I figured this would just be a great place for your Sim or Jack to come and tinker with things. And 
this was outside was just kept really simple. I just hung some lights from Horse Ranch to keep it that old timey feel. But now it is time to go up the ladder well in the bathroom and see just what is on the upper floor. Okay, so I have tried for God knows how long trying to get a view of this room through the free camera mode. But Sims cameras have been acting up for me lately. As you can see, like it's pulling back and all I did was try to scooch forward. It's been really buggy trying to get camera angles in here. So we're just kind of going to have to do a top down view. You guys saw me do this room not that long ago. So I just added another one of those really cool chairs, a knitting bag. And then I added a chalkboard over here to represent Jack and all of his plans with Sandy Claws. But it's a very simple room. I just added another little like skill feature with them using the knitting basket. And just one final look at our two houses here. And that is going to do it for part one of our mini Halloween town here in The Sims 4 based off of children's Halloween movies. I did originally plan to have all four houses in this video. But as you can see by the length of this video, I was only able to get two houses done. And technically I was only working on one. I am so far recorded footage at about nine hours of footage and it's taken me quite a few days to get through just editing what you've seen here today. So be sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll get a ding in your inbox when I get ready to post part two of this tiny home Halloween build. If you guys do enjoy this type of content, including all other Cozy Gabe content, be sure to give this video a great big thumbs up. It really and truly does help me in the algorithm. And if you'd like to keep up with me across all social media sites, check the description box down below for my socials, which is Twitch, Twitter, and Discord. If live streams are more your thing, be sure to follow me over on Twitch and here on YouTube where I do stream quite a few days a week. My schedule is still kind of up in the air as my work schedule has kind of taken over my life, but I am desperately trying to get back to you guys on live as much as I can. I'm a small time content creator looking to grow her channel in 2024 and I hope you guys will continue on this journey with me. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in to part one of this Sims build and I'll see y'all next time. Bye guys.